can sort of maintain some sort of sustained move upwards? We are still in an uptrend at the moment, as Michael mentioned, but if we have a look at the short-term graph and have a look at the 30-day chart on the Australian share market, you can see what's been happening over the last few sessions, and that's, that is that we've essentially just seen consolidation on the market. This is healthy. Um, we don't want to see the market moving up in a straight line, so hopefully it is the rest uh, that we see before the market moves back upwards. And I guess where we are seeing this consolidation, if we have a look at a one-year chart for the Australian share market, it is where previous support was. You can see uh, at the in uh, May and June last year we saw a support level currently where we are seeing consolidation on the Australian share market so consolidation low volumes going through the market today not surprising given that Japan was on holidays today and will still be on holidays tomorrow those defensive areas are performing and energy having a really weak session down by around about 1% and of course overnight we saw US crude stocks at the highest level since September 1990 so that was very much in focus for that energy space but all up still seeing consolidation on the market and really those gains uh, that we saw out of that 50 basis point cut from the RBA are petering out but we've ma maintained the levels. Julia I'm interested in something Michael said talking about some of the the more macro issues at play obviously very much uh, a focus on what's happening in in Europe obviously overnight we got some disappointing data of course the non-farms out of the US on Friday but he mentioned the budget do you think that the spectre if you like of a, of a tough budget this move back into to surplus is something that is in the the forefront of investor thinkings and do you think it will continue to be so I guess leading up to the budget there's always a speculation then the lock room and then the result coming through and there's always an anticipation of watching what the budgets are going to bring forth because the government is one of the biggest spenders in the market but year after year unless it's a big change to the sector or regulation uh, we usually don't see a huge impact in terms of uh, the share market performance it's usually driven by underlying earnings having said that in past years we have seen impacts coming through especially for for the likes of the healthcare sector uh, or, or spending in terms of infrastructure so I guess they're things that we're going to be watching closely but the market's not really expecting the government to be a huge spender of cash in the economy so I don't think it's going to come as too much of a surprise to the market really what the market's watching uh, over the next five session are international factors those non-farm payroll numbers especially given the disappointing uh, private job numbers which came out of the US overnight and then of course the French as well as the Greek elections and what's happening in Europe overnight we saw uh, unemployment in the eurozone rising to 10.9 percent some disappointing uh, manufacturing numbers coming out as well so Europe still in the back of investors minds as well as that huge job number coming out of the US on Friday it's obviously the the ASX very much pinpointing it is a reason we saw a drop off in terms of that that profit number but it seems to have been ongoing stats from April show volumes again a bit of an issue if we have a look at the cash volumes um, for April, really remaining quite steady, but it's the actual value trader which has dropped quite substantially, down by 29% compared to last April. So that's a substantial drop off, and it really does show that this is a more a market suited for traders rather than longer term investors. We are seeing smaller parcel sizes, our volume still remaining quite steady, probably indicating that there's more trading activity rather than long term investment activity in the market at the moment. Also, in that area of derivatives, it's quite interesting because it's not the single stock derivatives which are gaining ground in fact if we have a look at single stock derivatives we've actually seen volumes coming down it's been the area of index derivatives and we've also seen interest rate derivatives showing uh, quite strong growth over the last six months as well so looking at the der derivatives area it tells us an interesting story that it's not so much a single stock options in fact a lot of traders don't care about stock picking at all it's more about uh, riding the direction of the market and it's been those index options which have gained in popularity and seen some strong growth. Of course, when we do see ASX stats like this, which are quite soft, it has a flow-on effect to other stocks. So not only was, uh, were ASX shares down by 2.3%, but we saw Irish shares losing more than 5%. We saw computer share down by 1.2%. Market-related businesses like Macquarie also losing ground today. So those ASX numbers coming out, not so good for those market-related stocks. Julia, what about looking forward for May? Obviously, historically, uh, and not just in our own market, but in, in global equity markets, it's a pretty soft month. Look, expectations that that's going to continue, or do you think, are you hopeful that we could see a little bit more positive momentum? 
Well, you hear that adage, uh, selling May and go away, and this is the idea that you sell shares in May only to come back in Halloween or at the end of October. And I guess the reason why this uh, saying comes about is because usually the worst performing months are between that May to October period. In fact, if we have a look at the Australian share market from 1993, the worst months have been June and September, while the best months have been December and April. So I guess having a look at that selling May and go away uh, strategy, last year if you had employed that strategy you would have actually gained around about eight percent in terms of your portfolio compared to the market which actually fell by 14.5 percent but of course when the market's falling you don't want to be in the market so of course this strategy works in years like uh, two, uh, 1994 2002 2008 2010 2011 when the market's falling but generally if you have seen that the year-to-date performance up till May has been a positive one then it does pay to be all in in the market and remain in the market however if the year-to-date performance performance is a negative one, it pays to stay out of the market. And this strategy would have actually worked um, in 15 out of the last 19 years. The good news for investors and traders, of course, is that in the year to date, we're seeing the Australian market gaining 9% so far. So perhaps time to be all in. Yeah. <laughs>